Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and I'm here today with John Taylor at the Geek Group's Rapid Prototyping Lab. You are the president and founder of T-Tech. Yes, I am. So, uh, welcome to the Geek Group, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Glad so, to be here. Tell us about T-Tech. We got your beautiful machine in yesterday. We've got it all set up. So, mm -hmm. tell us about what, what is T-Tech? What do you do? T-Tech is a manufacturer of rapid prototyping equipment for printed circuit boards. Okay. And uh, we've been doing this for 26 years. I, we have one of your antiques over here. It is quite an <laughs> antique. Yes, uh, it's 15 years old, I understand, and uh, still runs very yeah. well. Yeah, so. and I got a kick out of this the other day because I thought Mr. Kidwell bought this 15 years ago, donated to the Geek Group like last year. Yeah. I thought that he had made the custom wooden enclosure for it for mm -hmm. noise containment, but it turns out this over here is actually a T-Tech thing from back in, in like the 80s maybe, right. early, early 90s. This is all original. Yes, it is. And we also have a mahogany stand. We've gotten away from using mahogany uh, for obvious reasons. Because it's and, 20 years yes, later and yeah. Right. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, we've made over 8,000 of these machines <laughs> and, um, and most of them are still running, so. We've had to replace one part on that. Wow. And, and we didn't even bother calling you guys. It was, we, we were the geek group. Right. So, you know, yep. it, there may or may not be a skateboard bearing in there, but it works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and it still holds tolerances. And that's what But counts. this is night and day. So yes. that's where you were 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is where you are now. And this is a totally different thing. Right. This machine has a 60,000 RPM spindle. It has a camera alignment system. It has uh, auto tool change for changing the tools. It runs unattended. So you load your Gerber data, set up the file, let it run, and it changes the tools until your board is done. So uh, it has a front panel control system here where you can manually operate the machine, as well as everything is duplicated here to uh, allow you to run the machine from the computer. Okay. So. And this doesn't need anything really unusual. I mean, we, we took it out of the box, we plugged it in the wall, it needed shop air, but every shop has air anyway. Right. It comes with its own special HEPA vacuum and uh -huh. all that jazz. Yep. And when we got this, the 15-year-old machine that ran on Windows 98 up until a week ago, mm -hmm. we threw a new computer on that because we had the new software, and the new software, the ISOPRO, works fine with the 15-year-old machine. It just, that's it, right. It just yeah. off and running. Yep. The first that level of legacy compatibility right. doesn't happen a lot of places. That's right. The first 300 machines we built were all the same and then we changed to this footprint and at least the electronic controls are still functioning. Okay. So that's neat. And so totally interchangeable. The idea here is this is the flagship for the new rapid prototyping lab at the Geek Group. We've, we've got a lot of other stuff in here. We've got the old board mill. We've got a couple different sizes of 3D printers from, from basic ones to massive ones. We've got lathes and CNC mills and, and all that jazz down uh -huh. here. This is the flagship for electronics construction because with this, it's possible to go from concept to creation in an afternoon, just art to parts. Right. And yes. this machine with other stuff that's coming, we'll be able to not just do circuit boards, but multi-layer boards. That's right, yeah. Because you guys have the whole line. You do the multi-layer right. presses, reflow ovens, everything. Mm -hmm. If yep. it has to do with prototyping a circuit board, T-Tech does it. That's correct. And this is all American-based. You guys are right out of Georgia. Uh huh. So I, I think it's hilarious that the box showed up yesterday and then you got on a plane. You're like, I'm coming! <laughs> right. and, and, and flew right up here like, Let's make it, let's set it up perfect, let's make videos, and we're really excited. We're, we're going to feature this well, a lot. I love getting out and seeing what our customers are doing, and seeing what y'all are doing here is very exciting. Uh, so, T-Tech, from the first phone call, jumped right on this idea. Uh -huh. And I think that was really cool, because we called you guys up a, a few months ago, and we're like, hey, we're the science group, and, and he didn't, you know, we, we talked to one of your sales guys, he had no idea who I was, right. and, and he's like, I'm really interested, but 
let me check you guys out before I take you to the boss and make sure that you're not an idiot or something. Right. And he dug into us and he called me back. He's like, this is great. I, I want to get the boss in on this. And, and instantly, like, you guys made a machine just for us. These are all custom made. Like there's, there's a, you can't just buy this off the shelf. It's That's like, correct. you want a machine. It's like, do you yeah. want the 60,000 RPM spindle or the 100,000? Do you, what voltages, what, you know, what yep. shape and flavor do you want? Right. And it's all, they're all handmade in the U.S. This, this comes right out of Georgia. That's right. And that's neat. I, I dig that. Yeah. And there's a lot more coming to this. Like there's, there's talks of a Linux version with, with software coming out mm -hmm. and, a lot, it's, it's an actively developed project. Right. We're excited to possibly move into open source uh, or the software. Of making That's a that. really big thing with our yeah. crowd. And uh, so I'm excited to be talking about that now. In the past, we've had constraints that kept us from doing that, but those are, have gone away. Okay. So um, we're looking forward to opening the software and making it a, a solution for everybody. Cool. So. Yeah. Well, we're damn glad to have you here, sir. Thank you. So we've got the machine out. Mm -hmm. We set it up, and it's all up. All we did since the last video was we plugged in Shop Air because we had to have the guys run an airline. Right. And you installed the software, mm -hmm. and that's just next, next, next click. There's really, it's, it's cake. Right. So now we have to teach people how to, like, how do we load a tool in it? We've, mm -hmm. got, we've got a full complement of tools here. It comes with the startup kit, and you guys threw in a bunch of extra stuff. Uh -huh. So let's start simple and go step by step. How do we load a tool in the machine? Okay. Well, to start with, the uh, software analyzes your Gerber data and it um, asks you to enter the tools that you need. So let's do that. Now that's, that's if you start with a Gerber file. Yes. Can you have, like, if you say, these are the tools I have, and, and you've got a dozen tools here, and you've got 20 spots on the machine, mm -hmm. Can you just put all the tools that you have in there, and then it says, okay, here's your Gerber file. These are the tools I know I have. I'm just going to make do with what I got. Right. It will do that, okay. and uh, that's no problem. What it's going to do is look in your tool rack and see what tools you already have. And then it can compute the offsets and, and all that. And then the ones there. that it needs that you don't already have, it will ask you for that. So you don't always have to have a full For the set. ones that it needs that you don't have, mm -hmm. provided that it needs a tool that can be done with the tool you have, can it say, okay, this is what I want, but you don't have that, you have this. Mm -hmm. It can't make a smaller hole because, duh, but right. it, can, it can move the little tool twice. That's right. So can it, is it yes. smart enough to know that? Smart enough to know that. Um, you go in and just tell it what size tool you have and that you want to isolate with and it uh, uses that new diameter tool. The idea is it makes your circuit board feature exactly the size that you've designed it in the CAD. Okay, so as long as it can be done right. with your tool, it can do That's it, right. but yep. there are, like, if, if you tell it, I want a one mil slice here, and you've mm -hmm. only got a six mil tool, well, you can't cut a one mil pole right. with a six mil bit, so. That's right. Okay, so as long as it's physically possible, it's okay. Right. Okay. Yep, and you can violate the rules um, if you if you know that a six mil tool would go in that spot, and it's not going to change your frequency of your design, then you can go ahead and tell it to violate that rule. Okay, because there's a lot of stuff where like you're dealing with RF microwave applications right. where that yeah. trace really needs to right. be that wide. That's right. Okay, and this in particular is a 3.3 gigahertz microwave uh, filter. Okay, so. that's just the test design that we're using today. Yeah. Okay, so I have a bit here mm -hmm. that is 0 .0625. Uh -huh. How do we load this into the machine? Well, what you do is you go to your tool table, select the tools that you want to load. Let's see, we're gonna need a 10 mil in mil and um, a 32 mil in mil, a 32 mil drill bit, and a 10 mil drill bit. I have a 32 in my hand right now, okay. 0 0.0320. All right. Um, and let's just, it's probably going to ask us in a different order. Oh, okay. I think it goes, it's asking for the 10 mil in mil. I think we have an 11. Is that close enough? Yeah, okay. 11 mil will do the job. Can we tell it it's actually an 11, not a 10? We can. Okay. Will it get upset if we do that? No. Oh, okay. So I put this in the collet right here. So that you, 
It goes in with the cutter side down. Right. And you just slide this right into collet. Is the collet open? Yes. Okay. So you just slide this right into collet. Mm -hmm. And it's an air actuated collet. So I'm going to hold it kind of funny. I just heard it do its thing. Right. This is so cool. I'm used to the, the big Haas machines with the, the 40, you know, the Cat 40 <laughs> Cat taper. Cat 40 taper, and it's like, yeah. Cut chunk! And it's, right. it's in. And with this, it's like, pssst, I got right. it. That's right. It's like a mouse fart. Just pssst, got it. <laughs> yep. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it knows to go put it in the next available tool location. Okay, so that's so. tool location two. Uh -huh. So it's one, two, three, four, like that. Yep. What do you want next? It's asking for the 032 end mill. Okay, I've got that. That's that one? That's a drill bit. That's a drill bit. When they're that tiny, it's really hard to tell the difference. Do you have one? Yep. What and notice the difference in the... Ah, the drill, the, the, the mill bits, the, the, the end mills are way short, whereas they're the drill bits are really long. Two flute carbide tools okay. with a stubby length. So now, these all have the numbers printed on them. These don't right. have the number. Is it on the shank? It depends no, on it's not. Uh, the vendor that you know makes the tools, whether they put them on there or not. So, so if you don't have the number on here, and you don't have the number on the shank, and it's been out of the box for a month, and you, uh -huh. you're not going to tell. I mean, Iskar Rick maybe could do that by eye. He's right. got calibrated <laughs> eyes. Right. It, he's kind of a freak like that. But I wouldn't know that. Just, well, so you just you can take mic it out. That's, micrometer okay. and measure it. Yep. Okay, I'm going to slide it in the thing. Hold it out of the way. There's the mouse fart. It goes back. And it's going to put that in three. Yeah. And you can see it. It's a press fit down in there. There's nothing here that grabs it. When it goes in, the machine just pushes it in like this. And it, mm -hmm. it clicks in. There's a little, uh, a little fingers and it just grabs it. Right. So if you have to, you can take a tool out, but don't put one in there without the machine knowing it's there because the machine can't, it doesn't know there's a tool in there unless it put the tool That's in there. That's right. So you could yes. get a collision and do bad things sure. if you just, I'm just going to plug all my tools in. So, right. okay. What do you want next? It's looking for a 32 mil drill bit. That I have. That's that one? Yep. Okay. And the drill bits are long. And they, they look different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'll load this right in here. And you just... When you put it in the collet, you just line it up really gently, slide it right in there, and you just hold it in with just fingertip mm -hmm. pressure up against it until it takes it. You don't have to like ram it in. You don't have to screw. There's no bayonet locks. Nope. It's just hold nope. it in gently, but make sure it's all the way up. It's one of the nice things about the type of collet that we use is you don't have to have two wrenches. Yeah, you don't have to, to mess with it. The it's, it's in there. Right. Well, with. With what this is, it's a really high RPM, but a very light axial load. This, That's right. This doesn't, you're not hogging out, you know, half inch deep cuts with a two inch cutter. This, right. is, this is doing thousands of an inch, <clears throat> so you can do that with this. What yep, do you want uh, next? Uh, this is asking for a 10 mil drill bit. And I think, is that what that That's is? That's an 18. That's a 18? Yeah. Okay, we don't zero have one a, eight. We don't have a 10 mil. Can we, so. can we tell it we don't have a 10 mil and just give it an 18 and say, this is what we got? Let's see. Uh, we'll have to do that substitution later. You can. So go ahead and put the 18 in and okay. we'll tell it uh, that's what we have. See, I like this because we have to do the, do the best you can with what you got. And that's what people in the uh -huh. real world do. Right. It, they're not always going to have the exact size that they need for the application. Now, where can we order? Do you guys sell these we sell in the a tools. variety of sizes? So we if I need a 10, I can call you up. And every know. letter size, every number size, and every wire size carbide drill bit in stock. Okay. From 4 mils up through uh, one eighth of an inch. Okay. So that's pretty much the size this runs is everything from down yeah. to four mils and right. a mil is one thousandth of an inch? Yeah. Okay, so this will go down to four thousandths of an inch right. up to an eighth inch. Yes. That's a pretty good range. And I've had some customers that are machining silicon buy custom tools from us. We've sold some two mil, two flute carbide end mills before. Okay. So. I got to hook you guys up with this car. Yeah. So what's next? Uh, I'm going to change the diameter of that a uh, 10 mil drill bit to an 18 mil drill bit. Yep. 
so that the software knows what's in Toolpod 5. And let's see. The next thing we need to do is set our depth of cut. Okay. So um, on end mills, we can do a three mil um, depth of cut here. So your depth of cut in the software is labeled 3.000, and mm -hmm. that's a 3,000th depth of cut. That's right. In my world, I'd see that as 0 0.003. Right. But that's this is weird. the units of measurement are in mils. Ah, here. so down here, units, yeah. mils. Okay. Right. So I went in and told it we're going to drill 90 mils. This is 062 thick, so we're going into the backer board about halfway. Okay. With the point of the tool, so... Okay, so there we go. We're ready to make the board. Cool. I'm going to put these away because this will quite happily sit like that, mm -hmm. but you have to keep okay. in mind that these are razor sharp mm -hmm. and they're very tiny. The, these are tools small enough that you could use this end mill or the drill bits to drill the hole through the end of an insulin needle. They're, they're that tiny. So it's probably a good idea to snap your shot before you do Oh! Ah! And that, right. that ends bad every time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so. Okay, let's run this layer. So we're going to go over and grab a tool. Mm -hmm. Now, I notice that there's a registration pin on the board on the front and the back. Yes. That holds the board down. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that maintains the alignment of the board. Right. But the vacuum system isn't on yet. That'll come on when, before it starts cutting, or do we have to do that? We can set, turn that on. That holds the board material down. Yeah, there's two vacuum lines. One is the, the vacuum hold down, and then the other one is coming out of this. That cleans up the debris as it goes, and it right. gets most of the dust. Not all of it, but a lot. So it's setting the depth of cut for the tool offset right now. So it comes down and it touches it and it measures, it says, okay, I can feel it and now we're cutting. So I'm going to close this because this helps with the noise a bit. Now most of our noise is actually not coming from the machine at this point, it's coming from the vacuum That's system. That's right, yeah. So if we could move that into the next room, this would be a lot quieter. Right. Okay. And I like... I like the little shroud because the vacuum on the thing is a really clever idea. But I think it's particularly cool that you have the little window right. so that you can actually see. We have, a, we have a giant version of this called an SR100. Uh -huh. It doesn't have the little window. When, it's, when the thing comes out, you can't see what's going right. on. I right. like because if your cutter breaks or something like that, you can see that. Right. Now, with this cutting, it brings down the shroud and the tool. And I know that it's a combination of that to, for when it measures the offset. Yeah. Can this detect if the cutter breaks? It cannot. What it can do is at the end of the run, it can go back to the target position and test to see if the tool is the same length that it started with. Okay. And so if it isn't, it can throw an error. At the end of the job, it can test. Okay. But while it's running, it's not testing okay. to determine the tool. And it's pretty obvious when you look at the board, you can tell if the tool's broke. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if, if the picture there doesn't match the picture there, something happened. Right. Yep. And we're done already? Mm -hmm. That was fast. Yep. That's pretty. All right, so it's all quiet again. Mm -hmm. And it puts its tools away when it's done. Yep. You're going to have it do I wish that. I could get staff to do that. You could ask it to do that or tell it to leave the last tool in place because the next job might need that tool And it just to saves the time with. for the tool right. start. Okay. Right. So. And at this point, this will just pop right <clears> out and we can see our part, but that's, that is exactly what's on the screen. And right. now we've made a, a microwave filter. Uh huh. So That's cool. Right. So it's really simple. It's there's there's a lot to this, and <laughs> it can get incredibly complicated. But we're going to cover that through the series of videos as we go. Right. But it's just like with the, the the other CNC equipment or the 3D printing stuff. 
Mm -hmm. If you step back, the overarching system is amazingly complicated, but it's made up of a million very simple steps that right. all make sense, and you build right. on this from a basic foundational knowledge. So today we start with, here's how to turn it on, here's how to put a tool in it, right. and we'll build from there. Yep. Is there and anything else that, that we should add in the, in the very introductory video on this? Um, the other thing that we can do, if you'd like, is remove all of the copper around the sure. circuit. You want to clean so, it up? Yeah, we can. Right. Uh, that's what this blue layer is. Um, and that is asking for a 31 mil drill bit. Okay. What do you got? I've got end mills over here. 31 mil drill bit, huh? I believe you've got one there. Go fish. Um, I got 32. Is that, that close enough? That's close enough. All right. Yeah, I don't have a 31. Most circuit board shops will substitute with a plus or minus two mils okay. on a whole design. Are and we open? Yep. Take it. Now, I see there's a camera on here, like a webcam. It's, it's a USB camera. Yes, it is. What is, oh, we got to turn the air on? Or are yeah. we just measuring? Turn it on. Okay. The camera is for um, aligning your board. If you have cut your board out and you want to put it back on and modify some circuits, you can realign your circuit here. But you have to have at least two lines or two holes, or, or how do you establish the layout? Um, God, that's fast. <laughs> it is. For such a tiny bit, the surface speed is that's crazy right. high. Yep. Now, I see it's not going all the way through in the first pass. Is it? Is it going down in steps? It is... Um, or did we screw something up? What we did is we put a drill bit in instead of an end mill. We should have put the 32 So it wants mil. an end mill. Right. You told me drill bit. You want to change it? Let's do. Let's okay. um, stop this layer. Okay, so we need an end mill. I don't have any end mills. But if you can get ready to release that drill bit. Okay. Let me know when I should grab it. Okay. We, we put in a 32 drill bit instead yeah, of an end mill. I said, read the screen wrong, I believe. It's okay. I'm sure... Open call it. People, you ready? Yep. Thank you, sir. I am sure that's not the first time you've done that. I know it's not the first <laughs> time I have. Is that the right size? Yes. Okay. I'm in. And the mouse fart. Okay. That would explain why it wasn't going all the way through. That's but right. it didn't complain because it's a lot longer, but it sets the offset automatically, so it's just cool. Right. Okay. You good? We're good. Okay, I'm going to turn on the noise again. All right. Here we go. This is weird. With this machine, every time you go turn the spindle on, I close the door out of habit because we have to do that with the Haas machines. Right. With this one, you really don't have to. It's probably not going to rip your arm off. No. You could hurt yourself with this. Oh, yeah. But, but you'd have to be particularly dumb. With that uh, housing around the tool, it really protects. Yeah, it's, it's got its own building yeah. guard. That's looking world's better. We're still not making contact all the way back. Yeah, we, what we need to do is cut a little deeper. It's looking a lot better than it was, but we're still not all the way there. Right. Let's, uh, let's change our depth of cut. 
It's it's set here at zero, which might be the that reason. That would explain why we're not going very deep. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Let me make that four mils. Okay. Oh, we're back on. And it turned the vacuum on all on its own. Yeah, it's turning on the, the spindle Oh, vacuum. that's beautiful. Look at that. That's it's way better. Down. That looks like it's supposed to look now. Right. Now that's... Um, that continued from where we left off. Yeah. Because it, it I just, just paused It the just machine. kept right on going. So, so we'll have to go back and clean up that yeah, first that bit first later. Okay. Bit. But that shows how easy it is to work okay. with the machine. We'll let this run and we'll come back after it finishes. Great. So it's about 20 minutes later. We've cut our part. It's beautiful. And we, we did it. We went from in the box, off the truck, to we made a part. And mm -hmm. that pretty much concludes our initial setup. Yeah. So is there anything else that you want to tell people about this and just to get it right out there in the first video? Well, uh, the machine uh, runs pretty much automated. Uh, it's easy to use, as you can see. And um, we're uh, happy to be here and work with the Geek Group to show our uh, and appreciation is, for what y'all are doing. This is the first of a whole thing. It's We are dramatically expanding our ability to do prototypical development of circuit boards. So this machine sitting here today is now ready for member use. So if you want to get a, a hands-on one of these because they're not cheap. This is, this is a $25,000 machine as it sits here. So you can sign up as a member to the Geek Group and just buy a simple day pass and say, I want to try one of these out. I want to test drive it. I've got, I've got my Eagle file. I want to check this out. And you can come here and run your part on this machine and get a feel for how it works before you make the investment to get one and make sure that this is what you want for your shop. And if it is, then we'll hand you off to John and his team and I'm sure they'd be very happy to help you out. For more information, go to thegeekgroup.org, and for information on the QCJ5, you can find it at the link below right there. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. You are? John Taylor with T-Tech. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.